Imagine having your visuals and your video content be perfectly in sync with your click and your tracks in Ableton Live. In this resource guide, I wanna share some resources and give you a couple pointers to get you headed in the right direction with controlling your video with Ableton Live. So we live in an amazing time where you can have the same production value, the same level of production as giant tours traveling the world playing giant stadiums. And it doesn't really matter uh, what your budget is. In fact, it doesn't take much budget at all. In fact, if you're already on Ableton Live, you have everything you need to use video. But there's a lot of different ways to do this. And so my goal with this guide is to present a couple different options to open you up to a world of a lot of possibilities of using video, as opposed to just saying, here's one specific way. Now, there will be some more detailed uh, tutorials and I'll mention if I have a course for example showing you how to control a specific software with Ableton but let's dive in and let's just get started with a couple different resources the first resource I want to mention when it comes to controlling video with Ableton Live is Ableton Live a lot of people don't know this but I can actually go into Ableton Live and drag a video I know I just have a tutorial video that I've done of my own here so it's a terrible example but I could drag this video into Ableton Live it's gonna open in this floating window and then if you're using um, I've only done this on Mac but this works on Mac or PC. But if you're doing this on Mac, as long as your computer is set to use as a separate display, meaning uh, don't let your computer be set to mirror display, but use a separate, then what you can do is take this window, click and drag and move it over to that window. And then pro tip, not a lot of people know this, you can double click to make that full screen. And then what's really cool about this, we can double click to get out of that. What's really cool about this though, is as I jump ahead in my video, um, uh, on my timeline in Ableton Live, my video is going to follow along. So I get a perfectly synced experience where my visuals are perfectly uh, in sync with my click and my track. So that's a really easy, simple way um, uh, to, to do this. Again, it requires no extra purchases. Um, it's a great way to start. And then what you would do is essentially, we'll talk about this more in detail. I have a tutorial coming up that's just how to do this. But you would essentially take an HDMI output into a projector, into a video switcher. If you need to go a long distance, you could use an SDI output. We'll talk about that more in, in, in a future tutorial. This is a great way to get started, but it's not the best way. And the reason I don't think it's the best way is I don't like putting um, the, the load of my entire performance on one computer. What I mean by that is I much prefer to have click and tracks on, um, uh, on one computer, my key sounds or vocal processing on another computer, and then my visuals on another computer. Now, I know that's really easy if you live in a world where money grows on trees. I've yet to discover that world. So in the meantime, this may be a good solution for you if you're looking for a low cost and or free because you're already on Ableton Live solution. Now, one other thing I want to mention that's great, that's a great utility for this, is Video Sync. Video Sync, and I'll include the link to this in the description of this video. Video Sync is made for my friends at Show Sync. We've talked a lot about Live MTC and and some of their great solutions they offer at the site. Uh, but you can go and use these Max for Live devices to really perform with video, to um, adapt and change your video in real time. There's really, I think, two approaches to video. Um, particularly in, in using it and loading it Ableton Live, there's what I prefer, which is just drop the video in and play and, and do whatever. But then there's uh, the approach of kind of almost playing like a VJ, like a video jockey as opposed to DJ, a disc jockey, where you're literally like performing with the, the visuals. You're adapting the visuals in real time. I know a lot of uh, my friends that, that do like live looping performances, they want visuals that respond and react in real time. Uh, well, Video Sync um, by Show Sync is a really great solution for that. It does require Max for Live. Um, uh, but you can see all these different effects and, and you can basically play your visuals as if it's an instrument in Ableton Live, again, which is great. Now, I, again, don't love the idea of uh, keeping everything on one computer. I would suggest keeping it on different computers and spreading the load out to do what I call external control. So that's the idea of, kind of like we talked about with lights, my, my tracks, my click are all on my Ableton computer and then I'm gonna send um, control information to a separate computer, separate piece of hardware. Let's talk about some solutions that work for that. Um, there's two different types of control methods we can talk about, what I would call trigger and then what I would call time code sync. Let's talk about trigger first. So uh, for instance, a, a software that allows us to trigger videos is uh, Resolume uh, Avenue, okay? Resolume Avenue lets us basically drop clips in uh, to Resolume. It looks a lot like Ableton Session View, functions a lot like that, which is really cool. Then we can use MIDI from Ableton Live to trigger individual clips. So if you want that real VJ type experience where you can affect the video as well too and do some really cool things, uh, then Resolume Avenue is a great solution for that. Another one that uh, I have not used in a very long time, but this was actually probably the first software I ever used to go 
oh, I can send information from Ableton to control a software for video, is our Chaos Grand VJ. Um, now they have some other ways to control and trigger video. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, but this is a really cool solution. Again, it, it looks kind of like that one view in Resolume where you just drop your clips and you can trigger. It's really great. Uh, QLab 4, uh, both QLab 4 and QLab 5, uh, you can do this. But uh, we'll talk more about QLab 5 in a second because it's got some extra special sauce on that we'll, we'll talk about. But what's really cool about this is you could load audio files into QLab. QLab is really big in the theatrical world, world uh, on cruise ships. A lot of more uh, Broadway style performances use QLab, not just for video, but for uh, audio playback for lighting and stuff. We'll talk more about QLab 5, some particularities with that in a moment. But what I really like about QLab is uh, it's really well coded. Video plays back on it really, really well. Uh, I've had issues with particular videos on my Mac and I've loaded them into QLab. Uh, in, in one software, I've loaded them into QLab on the same machine and they play back perfectly fine. So there's a mode of QLab where you just drop the video and trigger it directly from MIDI, which is really cool. Another one that's a big one, particularly if you're in the church world, you know this, ProPresenter. ProPresenter has some new features that allow you to do a little bit more. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Uh, but you could just drop video files in, trigger them again. There's built-in MIDI um, uh, information where you can uh, send a MIDI note, trigger ProPresenter. Side note, if you want to do that, save yourself time. Go to fromstudiostage.com slash ProPresenter. Dell in my free ProPresenter cues. Um, that's going to save you tons and tons of time. Uh, another one that you may not have really thought of is Keynote. Uh, so I've worked with an artist before that he had kind of a full presentation built out in Keynote. Um, it wasn't just video. It was more of like a PowerPoint type thing. Uh, and he wanted to leave it in Keynote. We worked on trying to get it into Able to Live. And uh, there was so much content. I eventually came back and said, John, listen, just leave it in Keynote. I think this is going to be the best approach. Here's how we're going to trigger it. Uh, so Keynote is a great solution. I mean, if you're doing a presentation style thing, uh, there, I mean, there's PowerPoint, lots of presentation software that you've probably used before. Uh, but if you're going to do this, you need some sort of uh, app to convert your uh, uh, MIDI notes to like keystrokes in, um, in um, Keynote or in PowerPoint. So for example, send a MIDI cue and say, convert that MIDI note to uh, one and then spacebar. Send a MIDI cue, convert uh, that to two and then spacebar. Uh, an app that I use a lot for um, those types of conversions is Keyboard Meister. It's, it's kind of become my new favorite. Bow MIDI Translator Pro uh, is also a great solution as well. I'll link that in the description of this video. Now, those are great solutions, again, for what I call like a, a trigger type video, where I basically send a mini note, it starts the video, then the video just kind of runs in time with my tracks. But what happens uh, when I want to repeat a section, I repeat a section in Ableton Live, that video is going to keep running because there's no trigger and no way to keep that in sync. Uh, so I want to tell you in a moment how to solve that and how to, uh, most of the pros do this, right? We'll, we'll put it that way. Instead of using trigger type video, they use another type. But before I do that, I want to ask you just to consider subscribing to the channel. Every single day at 10 a.m. Central, we post a brand new tutorial all about running tracks on stage and when Ableton Live, performing on stage with Ableton Live. Uh, and Sundays are all devoted to what I call the connected stage. So it's this idea we're talking about now of using Ableton Live to control different uh, elements and areas on stage, whether it's lighting, it's visuals, it's lyrics, um, it's uh, presets and cues with our uh, gear, whatever it is, using Ableton Live to do that. Uh, consider subscribing. Hit the subscribe button, enable the bell icon. You'll see well, precisely when every video goes live, 10 a.m. Central, uh, and you can join in and watch it premiere uh, in real time, chat with people all across the world. It, it's a lot of fun. We got a lot of, have a lot of fun around here. Um, okay, so next, how do the pros do this? So I do suggest running this on a separate computer, separate piece of hardware. Don't do this internally if you can uh, afford that. If you can avoid doing it internally, try to do it externally. Uh, you could trigger things in a kind of VJ style, style performance where you affect stuff. But the way most pros do it is not use a, a trigger type of command. They use a time code command. And what that means, we've talked about time code before. It's basically where you send uh, hours, uh, minutes, seconds, and frame information from one software to another so they're perfectly in sync. The way we do this in Ableton Live is we load what's called a striped timecode file into Ableton Live, send it out of a separate output into another software. Now, I know I said a whole lot there. Uh, we talked a little bit about this in our Connected Stage Masterclass. We talked a lot about this on From Studio Stage. But the most important thing you can do related to all of this is to head to fromstudiostage.com slash timecode. This is completely free. I'm not trying to sell you anything. Uh, this is completely free, but you can go and download that timecode file uh, and you're going to get timecode files that will at least start you in this process. You can load in Ableton Live and can control your, your lighting software, visual software, whatever it is. So um, the beauty of using timecode for this is we can load our timecode file into Ableton Live. 
we're gonna send that out of a separate output. And then um, uh, the other software is going to essentially read that, that input and go, oh, they're at this hour, this minute, this second, this frame of their playback, I'm going to jump to that part of the video, which is really great. So again, head to fromstudiostage.com slash timecode, but let's talk about a couple solutions and ways to do this. First, we'll start with software, then we'll talk about hardware. Again, kind of, we're moving more towards the more professional, more what what the, the big boys and girls out on tour use, but we're, we're kind of making our way there. So first thing I wanna mention as a resource is uh, Resolume Arena. Now you notice we said Resolume Avenue before, but Resolume Arena, one of the big things that it offers is a SMPTE timecode sync. So again, what that means is we can send timecode from Ableton Live to Resolume Arena so as we jump around, as we repeat, the video will repeat and follow perfectly. Um, this is, this is, I think the most uh, entry level pro solution. This is what a lot of folks I see that are traveling and playing maybe smaller clubs. Um, they don't have a big production team that they're traveling with, but they're running video in Resolume. It's a really great solution. You can do some more effects. You can control the output of things a little better, but it's a really, really great solution. Okay, next on the list, Again, particularly if you're in a church world, you've probably heard of this pro video player. You, you don't have to only use this in a church, but um, it's got the simplicity of ProPresenter. It looks a lot like the ProPresenter interface is created by the same people that do ProPresenter. Um, but what I, again, love is it does SMPTE timecode sync. And so it chases timecode, which means you can send it timecode uh, and uh, it will receive it and it's going to follow along. The video will perfectly follow along with uh, at how you play, which is really great. So uh, Resolume Arena, is a great solution. Uh, pro video player is a great solution. Let's go back our list to a couple solutions that used to not have time code that actually do now. So one, Arkeos Grand VJ. Again, I have not used this particular one, but it does say that you can send time code over ArtNet. Uh, all I know ArtNet is typically used for is uh, control of lights over Ethernet. So uh, I have not particularly investigated this, but it looks like with Grand VJ 2.7 you can now do time code sync, which is really cool. One I did know about, but I forgot about until I got to uh, researching this video again, is QLab version five now does time code sync. So if you go to uh, QLab and go to, uh, let's see if I can find it here, go to their page with information about QLab five. Actually, I think it says it right here. Nope, somewhere. Um, it, they mentioned, I don't know where this is, but somewhere on their site, they mentioned now you can do time code sync, which is great. Previously, you could do time code triggers, which means it would get to a certain point in time code and start something, but it wouldn't stay in sync. Well, now QLab, uh, QLab 5 will chase time code, which is really great. Uh, another option, again, I've got to go back and update a lot of courses, is Renewed Vision added a time code sync with ProPresenter using their new timeline. Now, I'll admit at the time of recording this, I have not tried this yet. I've tried to understand the timeline, and it looks awfully confusing to me. Uh, leave a comment below if you've tried this and you like it. Um, I think the implementation of this seems a little odd and maybe not the best solution. Uh, if you're in a church world, you probably already have ProPresenter, so it's a possibility, but at least we can now do time code sync in ProPresenter, which is great. Um, okay, so we talked about Resolume Arena. We talked about Pro Video Player, which are two really great solid solutions. Uh, I've mentioned Arceus Grand VJ 2.7 now has it, QLab 5 now has it, uh, ProPresenter now has a time code sync, but let's go even a little more pro. Now, what I have found um, at kind of the highest levels of using production uh, on stage, again, there's a level where a lot of people, you know, have a laptop and they run Resolume and you can do a lot with that and that works really, really well. Don't, don't read in between the lines. That's a really great solution. But at an even higher level of production, people have what's called a media server. Media server is just a fancy term that means a computer that's dedicated to running video or, or processing video. So it's typically a Windows PC or a Linux PC that's rack mounted uh, that uh, you know has a full OS on it, but it's basically restricted just with one software. It's optimized, it's tuned, so that just like how you drag audio into Resolume and use on your Mac, um, uh, you can do the same thing on these softwares, but that software is really, again, optimized uh, for that. Just want to give a couple solutions that I've only used. Uh, I've been a part of a production that used one of these. One of these I've used quite a bit. Uh, let's let's walk through those and I'll show you what those are. Okay, so let's start with the one again that I've used the most. Uh, this is the Hypnotizer by Green Hippo. Um, they have a lot of different media servers. They actually have kind of a, I believe a software only version of this if I remember now. Um, but these are really great. They're super, super powerful. Again, essentially all they, all they are is software loaded on hardware. 
I don't want to oversimplify that. My friends that are like lighting de uh, designers or video people will kind of kill me uh, for saying that and hate me for saying that, but that's essentially what it is. It's software on a dedicated piece of hardware that's optimized for video playback. I kind of like the ring of that. That sounds pretty good. Okay, so Green Hippo by, um, the Hippotizer by Green Hippo is a great solution for that. You can do a lot with LED walls and stuff as well too. Uh, Pandora's Box, which is from Christy, is a great solution. Um, one that, I, again, I was a part of a production that used this. I think this is a pretty old uh, uh, software, but I know some people that still use it as Catalyst. Um, it's a, I believe, Mac only software that you can load in and use. But again, media server basically means a computer has a software on it that's dedicated just to do that. And again, when you get to higher levels of production, that's typically what you're gonna find is some sort of media server that's doing it. And occasionally, we'll add one more note and then we'll wrap up here. Occasionally, um, it's a step further. As opposed to just a media server with software on it, sometimes uh, you will send time code to a lighting console. The lighting console will control the media server for playback or maybe it's like an LED wall. So a lot of, sometimes you have a video operator, video director that's in charge of video playback. Sometimes that role lands in like lighting world. And so you may be interfacing with a lighting console. Again, typically sending time code either in audio format or in MIDI format. Uh, if you're doing audio format, again, just from cosage.com slash time code to get started. If you're doing MIDI, we talked about it in our connected stage um, uh, a masterclass that's free here on YouTube that you can watch, but you could use live MTC as a great solution for that. Um, but again, if at all possible, move control, move video playback to an external uh, machine, either using Resolume or you know go full full board. If you're going the bigger production, probably going to be a media server, and in that case, whenever possible, use time code sync. Avoid a trigger video playback situation where it's just triggering video use time code sync. Again, unless you wanna be in a more VJ type uh, environment where you're playing the video clips live. So hope that's beneficial to you. Again, this is kind of a resource guide just to get you going in the right direction. We're gonna dive deep on a few of these solutions. Like I already have a QLab course, a ProPresenter course, uh, a Resolume course on the site. Um, I'll, I'll try if I can remember to link to those in the description of this video. That's available to from Studio Stage subscribers. But we'll continue to dive deeper here on the channel for free with some solutions that hopefully help. Uh, but again, what I love about this is we live in a time where anyone has access to the tools and resources that again, used to only be available to people with massive budgets playing massive stadiums. So um, the best thing you can do for your performance, uh, other than syncing visuals to Ableton Live, is subscribing to the Film Studio Stage channel. Hit subscribe, enable the bell icon, uh, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, and take care, everybody.